morning. Yes, it's Pietrus and Pardet with your St. Lucia Experience morning beach walk. Sorry, it's going to be a little, a little bit shaky today. I left some of the equipment back home. Of course, I got more fishing tackle again today. I'm confident I want to catch some breakfast. To me, it's about the fish and not about the hunt. I eat fish and I, I want my protein to be as green as possible. The shortest route between the hook and the cook. That is what you call green protein. Oh wow, it looks like shad season in St. Lucia. Look at this. Bloody amazing. I make the video just now, but Pardet was caught in some fishing line that was abandoned here on the beach and she went and she stops dead, dead, dead stop so that she doesn't entangle herself anymore go hooked on the hooked on the hook at the end that was quite interesting to see her reaction seems that uh, me running back to town to get some bait and lighter tackle I missed the whole shad thing oh well it's still a beautiful day on the beach Worthwhile being here. Only fast up out there. Ik bevoer echt. We goeie vrouw getrouwd. Baie dankbaar daarvoor. Wat denk aan? Een van jylle seens is een skelm wat my goed probeer breek. Een van jylle wat hier kyk sy vrouwens en sy tannies Het de lightie skelm groot gemaakt. Geleer om te lieg en te steel. En ander mense so goed te breek. Het moet boer vernederend wees, nee. Wel een van jylle lighties daar buiten is bezig om vir jylle te lieg, my goed te breek en ander mense so geld te steel. Dit is die hoogwater by Ingwe Beach. Hier is niks vis in die water en die branders nie. En op die plekke kan mens nie nabij genoeg kom om ver genoeg te gooi. Om in die water te wees waar mens moendelike vis kan vang nie. Oh well, we had our outing on the beach, Pardet. You were caught in line. I wasn't caught into anything. And um, water level update. The grass is still not dying. Although it's winter, the reeds is not dying. And they rooted well into saline water. Just an update. Hope things goes better for the estuary by the next uh, spring tide. Sorry about the camera shake. I didn't use the gimbal today because I came came to fish I've got some maintenance to do on this little bugger during lockdown I had to sell all the good stuff to stay alive now that little wheel over there is rusted so I'm going to put some brake flute on that screw and by this afternoon I'm going to see if I can get it undone and clean that wheel house out and see if I can get it turning again. With a braid, it's not a problem. I can fish with Point it like a reference. Mm, the wind direction made a little bit of a difference. The water level is a little bit lower, so we're waiting for the northeasterly wind on spring high tide to see if we're going to get a breach. I had to go and buy a newspaper. I don't read the report, but I wanted to show you what I think about the report. Um, in the making of the next video. I could have used any newspaper, but I think Rapporte deserved the exposure much better. Um, they just can't, jylle kan nie, jylle opskrifte met jylle inhoud vir die eenselwag nie. Dis hoe kom ek op rapport pik vandag, maar al die kraan, dis, dis, al die kraan, dis a probleem. Ok, what we're doing now, is we're trying to minimize plastic on the beaches. We're trying to reduce our carbon footprint. On nature so what 
What I'm going to help you to do today is to preserve your sardines to last longer and to prevent you from taking boxes and plastic onto the beach. Especially, you can help the people that can't watch this video, that hasn't got access to the video, that don't have deep freezers either, to show them how to preserve their bait without the deep freeze. All you need is brown sugar and coarse salt and newspaper. Now most of these, these newspapers are available for free. I just thought I'm going to give this wrap to We've the got is some IQF sardines here. They're normally not the best quality sardine to buy to start off with. But because I um, treat my sardines in brown sugar and coarse salt, the quality of the sardines is not really that important to me. And a mixing bowl to mix the salt and the brown sugar. The ratio I mix is two-thirds salts, one-third brown sugar. Now you can add more brown sugar if your budget allows it. The more brown sugar you can afford, the better. But 50-50 is too much brown sugar. You don't need, need it at 50-50. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to put the sardines in the salt. The sardines are going into the, the pickle mix. Boom, 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 boom. Now we just make sure that they covered up. As you can see, this, these sardines are still pretty frozen. They can be defrosted. It doesn't matter. It, it really, really no problem on, on how you... Yeah, you do it. Frozen, defrosted, it doesn't matter. Now that they covered, now I'm going to take a piece of newspaper. Now, that you see this I can dispose of responsibly into the garbage bin before it reaches the beach. Now that the sardine is nicely covered, I start rolling it in the newspaper. And I fold the ends of the newspaper in. So that I don't use my salt. Right. One done, many to go. Now you can put two sardines in a wrap. You don't have to wrap them individually. I just don't know how often I'm going to go to fish. And how long I'm going to stay on the beach. I don't want to put too many sardines at once. But if you put two sardines in the newspaper. Voila, head to toe. You first cover the sardine some, and then you cover the whole sardine, and you keep on rolling and rolling and rolling, and then you fold over the ends, voila, and you keep on doing that until all your sardines is covered. Now this you need to put in a good container that can seal because you can't let this stand around the house it will attract flies and your wife, wife won't be happy luckily when i'm working in st lucia i've got a bachelor life so uh it doesn't <laughs> face the wife much on what i do in my kitchen but still at home even here i will put this the remainder of this in a sealed container so it doesn't attract flies into my living area this was done in haste to get the video out there, but I've got two, four, six sardines wrapped. I can either take I can take them one one at a time or two two at a time or three or four at a time or six at a time. Depends on how much fishing I would like to go and do. The rest I put back in the plastic bag in the deep freeze and I take them as I want to use them. Not very wise. I saw me use the old bread bag. To put my extra sardines in because I'm only going to take one when I go down to the beach this afternoon and I'm going to use a old coffee tin I know it's not wise because it's salt but it's a once used there's not the mix is not big so um, I might still use it once or twice and then it's going to be redundant um, and that that time frame it can stay in the coffee tin and it can be sealed and the flies can be right the wind is blowing as you can hear it's high tide here at St. Lucia Estuary Beach no fish coming out. Once again, I've got the two light rod. 
The famous fisherman has got the wrong tackle. And I left my recording equipment at home. Water on its way back. Wish I had my camera here. The zoom camera. Because it's going to be an interesting exercise. And he's stuck on the sand. Very stuck. Just waiting for water on the beach. And there he goes. I think the one I bought today is a little bit too small. Better luck next okay, time. What shall I use? The reason number two, why did I give up? Wind, too many people. Um, I don't know. It was uncomfortable. Shades coming out nicely. People are catching them on bait as well as on under on blue on the lures. This one exactly this one that I've got. Um, that is the favorite at the moment. Uh, right now it com comes out more on that lure than on a bait or anything else that's been used over there. But um, yeah, sadly my friend is going to be committed to hospital and. Uh, I don't know. Sterkte my friend. Ek hoop jy kom heel ander kant uit. Het is vrede mense wat jou pad gekruis het. Dus kom maar net vir jou bid. Het is baie vrede mense wat jou pad gekruis het. En om te dink dat dit by een kerk gebeur. Yes. Het is sad. Maar nou ja. Het is die lewe nie. Okay, let's do some real maintenance. That um, screw over there, as you know from the video, was very rusted. I couldn't undo it. So all I did is I took some brake fluid and my COVID measuring needle, because I'm not going to use it again. I put some brake fluid in there. I dropped it. A couple of drops until it was wet. And I left it for a while. And then I brought the screwdriver and it was loose, trust me. Now I'm going to take it out and I am going to clean that little wheel a little bit. The line, the runner that the line has to run on. It looks if it's beyond salvaging. Let's take it out and have a look. Okay, it seems to be a fixture. Um, so I'm not going to be able to get it off. I'm just going to add some more brake fluid behind there. Now, guys, the reason why I don't use Q20 is I don't have the first reason. The main reason why I don't have is Q20 is a penetrating oil. It never stops penetrating. So what I normally do is I clean the rust off with the brake fluid. And then I take some of my wife's expensive a, a Teflon oil for her, new, uh, for her sewing machine. And I also pull that into a syringe. And then I put as much of that Teflon oil into there as I can get in and hope that I wash some of the brake fluid out. But I found that brake fluid is the quickest and the easiest way to clean the rust away. I must remind myself, however tempted I am to tighten that screw, I didn't loosen it when I took this one out. So I'm not going to tighten it. If it needs tightening in the future, I will adjust it. But right now, 
I'm going to leave that as it is before I took the screw out. Now I'm not going to put Teflon oil in the right there. I'm going to use, let it work a little bit tomorrow for a couple of days before I'm going to open it up and put some Teflon oil. And there's a lot of rust to work through here. Everywhere there's a lot of rust. It's not going to work out tonight and I don't want to I don't have the mechanical knowledge or confident to interfere with it too much so I'm just going to clean it and let the brake fluid do it work for a couple of days it around if I had an earbud now I would have put some brake fluid with the earbud on there I don't have an earbud so I'm going to use some toilet paper to wipe it off with brake fluid that rust off with brake fluid please if you don't have a screen protector on your phone don't use brake fluid while you're working with your phone it damages the touch screen completely i've got a glass screen protector on here but before i put the screw back i made sure that my line is through here otherwise i had to pull it out cut it off pull it out and thread it through the eyes again now i can't I promise you that wheel is turning yet, but I'm going to use it for a couple of days, let the direct fluid work, work through. As you can see, all the rusty screws are treated with the brake fluid. And I don't suggest you guys jump up and go and grab your reels and service it with brake fluid. No! No, 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 no. I'm showing you what I'm doing with a reel that I otherwise would have discarded as broken and unserviceable. I'm trying to revive this little bugger so I can fish again tomorrow. Don't treat working reels like this. It's not even a disclaimer. It would be absolutely ridiculously unresponsible to take a working reel and treat it with brake fluid. I'm quite happy to report that the inside of the, the reel, there's no rust. I just need to wipe out that sand with a little bit of clean toilet paper. And there's some rust there, but when I come back with uh, Teflon oil in two to three days time, I will treat that rust. I'm not going to do anything on the drag washers right now. I'm going to leave this reel as it is i'm only want to get rid i'm only trying to get this little wheel the line guide to turn that's all that I, my objective is right now so we can use it for a couple of like days still drenched with the brake fluid okay i almost forgot about the little thumb scanner on the cell phone just cleaned my thumb quickly now that wheel is still not turning. It will be fine for catching shad. But if I get anything bigger than a shad, I'm going to lose it. If I get a big shad, bigger than 450, I'm going to lose it. But that's the name of the game. I have to save up to be able to afford the, nice, the nicest things in life. So this is it for today's video we did some bait we did some attempt to reel repairs i bought this little reel in 2012 for 89 bucks so i'm not going to spend too much time in trying to figure out on how to repair it if i can catch a couple of sets this season with it and get a two or maybe three thousand views extra on the channel I can afford to buy a better spinning reel for this rod. Not a very expensive rod either. My shad tackle, I don't go expensive. I keep it cheap, I keep it affordable. Because you don't know how often you catch shad. And you don't want to spend too much money on the tackle. But that is already tucked in and for the couch.